All right. So um, right now, what we're going to be talking about is uh, what in this video is still true. Now that we've had a little bit of time to look over logs and see how things have turned out, we're going to look at uh, what is still true. Um, and we're going to look at what is no longer true. And we're going to talk about uh, what information you need to know now that we've actually uh, had at least a day of, uh, of the pre-patch. We need to talk about the additional information that you need to know. All right. Now, a lot of this information is going to be found in the comments. If you ever look at any of my videos, uh, the first thing you should do is be aware of everything in these comments over here, because anytime changes happen, um, I'm going to include them in this little edit down here. Okay. So definitely be aware of this stuff, right? This is, this is just basically where I can take information and change it and let you know whatever the newest information is. Okay. Uh, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and watch the video now. Uh, and we're going to talk about it and you guys are going to be on the YouTube video as well. So, uh, if you have any questions, type them in chat, I'm going to try and, uh, mainly address questions towards the end, but we'll also be pausing the video as we go. Um, so let's get started. Uh, actually we should turn off background sound. There we go. What's up guys, this is Preheat, and in today's video, we're going to be covering everything you need to know as a mage going into the Shadowlands pre-patch. A lot is changing, uh, corruption is being removed, we're getting new abilities baseline, uh, and there are things that are fundamentally changing when it comes to uh, how you actually play the specs in general. So, think of this as kind of like a survival guide going into the pre-patch, uh, basically telling right, you which right, talents correct. to use, which Azurite traits to use, yep. what stats are best for you, and yep. what's going to be changing in the playstyle itself. I do Hold on, should I do the Asmin Gold thing where I go like, yep, right, correct, yep, yep. I do not recommend skipping ahead in this video because I will be condensing a lot of information into a very small time, and because of this, I won't be repeating certain things, right? So if there's something that applies to all specs, I'm just going to bring it up the first... What was that? Turn up the video volume. Okay. First time it comes up and not bring it up again. Uh, so make sure you watch through the whole video at least once. That's all I'm saying. There we go. Uh, and then feel free to skip to whatever portion you need. And I'll definitely have them marked in the uh, in the video as well. True. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so without further ado, let's talk about the first thing. Obviously, we're losing corruption. True. Right? So corruption getting removed is going to be huge. Uh, it's going to definitely affect all the mage specs, uh, especially fire, because we're losing basically all that mastery that we've got banked up. Yep. Uh, but there are other changes as well that will kind of offset this. And we'll talk about that. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So far, so good, guys. Okay, so obviously, like we mentioned, there's no more corruption, right? So you don't need to worry about that on your gear. Any corruption that you had on your gear is just straight up removed. Uh, now, additionally, fire mages and all mages actually are getting Frostbolt, Fire Bless, Arcane Explosion, and Mirror Image baseline. Uh, so what this means is that you uh, have these new abilities available to you. Now, they aren't necessarily all... Uh, useful in fact um i would argue that the only two that are useful at all uh on that lineup at least in uh rating are going to be arcane explosion and mirror image yep yep uh, mirror image is a semi-strong personal it's basically a 20 percent damage reduction that lasts 40 if you want to know when to use uh mirror image the best time to use it is uh like on the fight like mott use it during the damage reflect stuff like that mirror image is insane for right because like the damage reflect isn't necessarily uh direct damage that you're taking back so it doesn't remove mirror image stacks at least as of right now it doesn't so that's just like straight up a 20 percent damage decrease right anytime that there's heavy damage in a boss fight and there are so many instances in raid bosses where there are, uh, are times to take uh or, or times where you take more damage right um use this skill seriously don't sleep on it do not use it for damage it is not for damage use it as a damage reduction uh, you can also uh, use it like before the pull uh, if you want to just squeeze out like a very, very small amount of damage. But like I said, uh, definitely use it as damage reduction. That is the strength of this ability. ...seconds or until you've been directly hit three times. Uh, and Arcane Explosion is an ability that you'll really only use in very specific scenarios. For fire, that scenario is going to be any time that there are over five enemies that are going to be dying within five seconds. Um, or any situation where there are enemies that are above the ignite target cap uh, substantially. Now, keep in mind, you also have flame strike, which kind of fills the same niche as arcane explosion. So for fire, I don't really recommend using arcane explosion at all, unless there are enemies yep. that are low health. They're going to be dying before you could have an ignite tick out. Okay, so an example of that would be hive mind. Okay, so if you want to know when to arcane explosion, it's on hive mind whenever all the ads spawn and they're about to die. Right, like you want your ignites to get out on them, so like your first your first combustion of the fight happens, uh, you spread the ignite to all the adds, 
after you spread the ignite, you're just going to be pumping arcane explosions because guess what? Those ads are all going to get roasted. Moving on, uh, the biggest change to fire is that ignite no longer spreads automatically. You have to do it manually. And this is achieved through a new spell, Phoenix Flame. Well, not really new, but a returning spell, Phoenix Flame. Uh, so it's a relatively short cooldown, has three charges. Uh, and the way that you're going to want to use Phoenix Flame is pretty much in the in the uh, the slot of Scorch. So during your combustion phase, you're going to want to use Phoenix Flame where you would normally. So uh, this chart is correct. Um, the only thing I would say is at the end, do you only use this Phoenix Flame at the end if you want to spread the ignite? So this right here is only if there's more than one target, right? So if you're spraying your ignite to one or more additional targets, then you'd use a Phoenix Flame at the end. Otherwise, you wouldn't. Scorch in the rotation and then at the very end to spread your ignite. Uh, so essentially, you're going to be spreading your ignites uh, twice throughout the uh, combustion sequence here. Now, keep in mind, uh, if you have an ignite that you've built up and you want to spread it to more ads, let's say that maybe you spread it once and then more ads come in and you want to spread it again, uh, you are going to be target capped at eight targets plus the additional uh, or the initial target. Yep. So if you're ever trying to spread ignite to more than nine targets total, it's not going to work, right? The only situation where you can ignite more than nine targets is going to be if you hit them all with a fire spell like Flame Strike or something like that. Uh, so definitely uh, play fire just the way you have normally. The only thing that changes is just that you have to spread ignite manually. Yep. This should be done whenever you have an ignite that is worthy of spreading or in any situation after a combustion, right? So obviously your, your ignite's going to peak during combustion. You're going to want to spread it right after that um, or after your, you know, your rune of power meteor sequence that you normally do. Uh, speaking of rune of power, there's uh, something we also have to talk about when it comes to rune of power. Uh, the spell has been redesigned so that it automatically drops a rune whenever you pop your cooldowns. And now or whenever you have visions of perfection and you proc a vision of perfection, it also drops a rune. That was a bug in beta that was also affecting uh, a, a talent for arcane. They fixed the talent. They did not fix the VOP interaction. So if you want to have more runes, it is uh, it's best to go VOP. Now, keep in mind, um, it won't always be the best talent. Sometimes uh, RNG can fuck you over, right? Like it's very RNG dependent. I would say go VOP in situations where um, the fight's going to be really long because on a long fight, like on average, it's going to do good. If it's a really, really short fight, you're kind of you're kind of risking it, right? Like you could have an insane log. Like let's let's go back to the log I was looking at, right? Um, like you could have an insane log or you could have like a really bad one, right? Like look at the variance here. So this is obviously Arcane and Frost, but like look at this variance. The reason why the, the variance is so high is because um, at least for Frost here is because of the VOP, right? Like this is like giga giga procs and this is like no procs. So like just keep in mind whenever you're using VOP that like you could end up on the back end here or you could have that fucking insane, uh, the, the insane pull as well. So you're kind of rolling the dice, all right? So just be aware uh, that basically you are rolling the fucking dice. And also if you have to move around a lot, it's not going to be as good either, right? Because it drops a rune right where you're standing. So if you're standing in a bad spot and it drops a rune, well, guess what? You're shit out of luck, right? Because that's where the rune is, right? So uh, just be mindful of that as well. Now you have uh, one charge of rune instead of two. So rune automatically drops whenever you pop your cooldowns. It lasts 15 seconds now instead of only 10. Uh, and then you you have an, a charge that you can use additionally here. So um, basically, this changes nothing. It just I'm going to skip ahead. Have to cast. Rune. I'm going to skip ahead on fire because we we don't really need, need to talk about all this stuff. Um, I'm just going to talk about one thing really quickly. Um, so uh, like I mentioned, VOP is an option, right? Obviously, you're going to want to go Lucid um, or you're going to want to go World Vein. Uh, these are the two main builds for fire. And in fact, if we look at logs, uh, it's what people are going. So. Um, really, for fire, there's no there's no real funny business. Um, the only thing I would say is that you probably want to secure yourself a uh, one of these trinkets over here. It's the um, what's it called? The Highborn Compendium of Storms. You're going to want to secure yourself one of these trinkets because uh, this trinket sims really, really well, especially for Frost and Arcane. It also does pretty good for fire. Uh, primarily for fire, you're probably going to want to go double on use. But if you go uh, the Minute Mage build, which is the World Vein build, where you have a combustion every minute, then instead you're most likely going to want to use uh, this trinket right here because it's very good. Also for World Vein, uh, it's also entirely possible that you play VOP. I wouldn't recommend it for fire though, but it is possible. Uh, VOP is definitely very, very strong for Frost and Arcane. Not so much for fire, but like I said, uh, just be aware that, you know, with good RNG, it could just do better, right? So like Warcraft logs eventually will probably fi be filled with all mages playing VOP. Just because on average, those uh, those have a higher delta, which means they have more variance, which means 
that the that one percent log right that you eventually get to uh, that's on the the top end of the scale uh, that's what eventually will be taking up Warcraft logs right like eventually uh, over time every parse will be this top tip here okay so just keep that in mind as you look at Warcraft logs that you are looking at the best RNG possible you're looking at the best outcome so more variance equals more likely that that spec is going to be the one that shows on Warcraft logs. Always keep this in your mind, guys. Never forget about this fact. ...be using Flame Patch in any situation where you're going to have extended AoE or targets will not leave the Flame Patch area. Uh, if you are Flame Patch, I recommend using it on any pull that's like uh, more than three targets in extended period of time. Uh, anything to that effect there. Okay, so when it comes to Azerite traits for fire, uh, I really shouldn't even need to mention this. It's the same stuff that you've been using. So basically, you want to have Blaster Master on every single piece. Now, after you have Blaster Master, you should kind of have a, a mix of stats or uh, traits that you might want to go with uh, when it comes to your uh, your additional majors there. Uh, so that can be something like Wildfire. It could be Fire Mind. Heart of Darkness is great, too. Uh, one thing that's really great about Heart of Darkness in the pre-patch is that it no longer requires you to have Corruption at all. Uh, because corruption's been removed. So basically, Heart of Darkness is just a flat bonus, and it always gives it to you, which makes it a great alternative as well. Another thing to note is that Mage across the board is getting a 10% buff. So keep in mind that... Uh, Most people probably aren't even aware of this 10% buff, but uh, it Mage did get a buff, right? So if you're playing right now, and you're a fire, um, you are buffed by 10%. So just keep that in mind too. Uh, all right, dude, try not to look so cool for the YouTube video, all right? I, I get it, dude, I get it. I used the wrong word, it's fine. Uh, most people probably don't know the difference. You, you know what I mean, right? Like, it's literally the bar being higher up, okay? Anyways. All right, so next up, let's talk about a build that you probably haven't played at all recently. So uh, we're gonna be talking about Frost. Now, Frost is a build that you absolutely want to play in the pre-patch. The reason why you wanna play this build in the pre-patch, aside from it being absolutely bonkers damage, is that uh, you're going to want to be familiar with it because in Shadowlands, Frost is absolutely nuts. Now, we don't have Conduits. We're not going to have our Soulbinds, our Legendaries, our Covenants. Uh, but, you know, even without that stuff, Frost is actually still extremely strong. And the main reason for that, the culprit, is Winner's Chill. Uh, so, for those of you True. who are aware, Winner's Chill is the name of the debuff that is applied whenever you cast a Flurry under the effects of Brain Freeze. Uh, and this debuff has now been increased to two stacks. So basically, yep. you get two spells that act as if the target is frozen after you apply Winter's Chill. This is a massive buff to Frost, and uh, it definitely opens the door to a lot of new builds. Now, this coupled with the fact that we no longer have Corruption uh, means that TV is back, baby, and it's back in a big way. So, true, true. Uh, the build that I recommend for Shadowlands pre-patch is this build right here. Um, don't worry about Glacial Spike or Ray of Frost. You're going to want to go Thermal Void. Yep. Uh, we're going to want to maximize the amount of ice <laughs> yeah. that we can put out. So <laughs> is he watching his own video and agreeing with it? Yeah. No, I'm actually here to disagree. It's just the problem is so far, uh, nothing has been disagreeable yet. So I will be talking about a lot of stuff on, um, on Arcane because there's a lot of stuff to talk about that I disagree with now, like a day later on Arcane. So far, though, we agree with everything. Uh, the only uh, we're just adding like small, uh, small considerations for VOP, like I mentioned. Right. Um, and uh, really, that's it so far. But we will be disagreeing with some stuff soon. Um, it is funny, though, that you point that out. That's going to be uh, the way we're going to do that is by picking Lonely Winter, Chin Reaction, Splitting Ice. Uh, now, whenever it comes to your 30 row, uh, you can go Rune of Power. But if you have a Mage Bro who also is down, uh, you can both go focus magic and then trade focus magic with each other. Uh, I don't recommend doing this. Don't do this. Um, focus magic is apparently bugged. Um, stick to rune of power. And uh, when, by the way, if I ever say VOP, I mean vision major. So you saying what about vision major? I literally just said VOP. That's the same thing. If I say VOP, visions of perfection. That's what that means. Okay. Uh, this is a good alternative. Actually edge out rune of power by just a little bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, keep in mind that rune of power does automatically drop now. So you don't have to worry about casting that with your normal cooldown setup. As far as the Heart of Azerite goes, you're going to want to go Condensed Life Force since it basically pairs perfectly uh, with your Icy Veins. And then for the other traits, um, it's really up to you. I just go with the standard stuff, right? So that's going to be Conflict and Strife, Breath of the Dying, and Memory of Lucid Dreams for the... So the, the minor essences here, those are like largely just dependent on whatever your character sims as because they're stat weight dependent. You'll see all sorts of stuff in logs. Uh, but for the main one here, right, like having uh, Rock Boy as your main essence is totally fine. 
and it's the safest option if you want to just like like if you are just wanting to do like good consistent damage this is the best option okay uh but if you want to uh like i mentioned before if you want to have that higher upper bounce then having vop as your major uh allows you to reach that higher upper bounce right so just keep that in mind right there's there's always a best tool for any situation all right so sometimes the best tool is having nice consistent damage Sometimes the best tool is having that pop off factor where you can just go the fuck off and you can have like an insane log, right? Like the in the higher variance, obviously, um, is is better whenever it comes to the higher end, as long as your you know, average is the same. Right. Um, so that's why if you look in logs, obviously, they're mostly going to be VOP. Uh, but can, but Guardian of Azeroth is still a good option. So just keep that in mind, guys. Keep that in mind. Both are good options. One is the safe choice. One it has that pop off factor. It could go absolutely nuts. Right. Or it could be really, really bad. You could just have it not proc at all. The additional versatility and for those extra icicles as well. Uh, so whenever it comes to stats, I recommend going um, crit until you reach the crit. Soft nope, cap. nope. So don't do that. Soft cap is going nope, to nope. be. OK, so this this is where we're going to start disagreeing with some stuff. OK, so when it comes to stats, uh, I'm going to repeat what I say all the time. Uh, you need to sim your own character, okay? So these sims are based off of my character. This was before I had any data, okay? So this was all just guesses based on my own character. And it turns out my own character is actually not a very good indication. So it's not that I was wrong. It's just that I was looking at only one sample point, And now I have a ton of sample points. And I can tell you that generally speaking, all of the stats are basically the same. Um, so like if we look at my stat weight sim that we were looking at before, right? And we go to uh, go to Frost, right? So let's let's go look at my stats for Frost. Uh, we literally plotted this out now. And as you can see, the bars are basically the same here. And it is true. Versatility and mastery are basically the same for me. Right. But look, crit is also in that line, too. Uh, and then it obviously falls off once we reach the hard cap here. My best simming setup for my character uh, is right now. This is my exact setup, right? I've got 27 percent crit. So it's not 33. You know why, though? It's as soon as I enter combat, we reach 33. Watch this. 33 you see because of clockwork heart so just keep all of this stuff in mind guys it's very very important to uh, sim your own character and look at your own stats but if you don't want to do that if you just want some general overarching statement to go by uh here is uh my best guess at what like i can tell you um just just think about versatility crit to 33 and uh haste think about these all as kind of like about the same and then uh just you know basically avoid uh avoid going above 33 percent crit right like they're they're all basically the same um i would say and and haste kind of falls off a little bit too here um but yeah i mean like it, it it's so close right like it's literally so close that it's almost impossible to say that one is definitively better than the other you just have to you just have to sim your character that's really all there is to it and i will be including this in the note as well um in fact i already updated it for this video so uh 30 percent the reason why you want at least you want to skip ahead here so as far as Azerite traits go, you're going to want to start off with Flash Freeze. Flash Freeze just makes your Icicles deal more damage, and it gives you more Fingers of Frost. Uh, additionally, you're going to want Packed Ice, which makes your Ice Lance deal more damage if the enemies have been recently affected by Frozen Orb, which will be a lot of the time. Uh, and then for the last one, you're going to want at least one Whiteout. The reason why you want at least one Whiteout uh, is you want that CDR. The CDR on your Frozen Orb True. is pretty big. True. Now, if you have more than one, that's fine. The damage goes up. The damage isn't the big component here, though. It's the CDR that you want. True. So make sure you have at least one wideout, and uh, everything else should be just fine. Okay. Uh, to add to that, uh, Frigid Grasp is also quite good. Um, so if you want something else to look at here, uh, if we go over to my Azerite. Uh, so this is Pact Ice, uh, Pact Ice and Flash Freeze. I would say you probably want at least just one Flash Freeze, uh, but stacking it maybe isn't that great. At least one flash freeze is good. Um, and then uh, for the other stuff, Heart of Darkness is also very good. So check that one out. And then uh, Frigid Grasp is also good. Now, here is the strategy you should be using. Though. The absolute best Azerite to use is the highest item level. All right. It's not the stats on it. It's not the traits. It's the highest item level for Frost. Okay. So you're going to want to use the 145, whatever the highest item level is, right? That still has these stats. So Obviously, you want to have Packed Ice, Flash Freeze, Heart of Darkness, Wide Out, Clockwork Heart, Frigid Grasp. These are all absolutely fine traits to use, okay? And knowing which one is best, that's going to come down to Sims. But generally speaking, the best as right for you is going to be whatever has the highest item level. Okay, guys? So just keep that in mind.
Okay, so moving on, we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite meme spec. So Arcane is a spec that has changed a lot in Shadowlands. Um, I'm going to try not to focus on all the details because there's too much going on here and I don't want to get into all of it just for the sake of time. Uh, so I'm just going to hit the cliff notes. All right. So when it comes to Arcane, uh, you're not going to be going to Arcane Missile Spam build that you might have seen on beta that doesn't work yet. Okay, so this is technically true, uh, but it's actually so close that it's it's kind of hard to call. Uh, you can absolutely play the Arcane Missile Spam build. If you go Arcane, uh, what's the name of the trait? Arcane Pressure? Well, no, no, it's not that. It's the it's the Arcane Missile trait. You guys know what it is, right? Uh, basically, if we go Arcane, we can show you the build really quickly here, and we should do that since we're done with Frost. Um, the idea is you just want to have basically as much, uh, you want to just have as much stats as possible. Like that's, that's number one, is just having like a crap ton of stats. And then, yeah, so it's Arcane Pummeling. Um, the pieces I have are all Arcane Pummeling and Heart of Darkness uh, or something to that effect, right? This is the best setup. You just want to have three Arcane Pummeling um, and then you want to have as much stats as possible. Obviously, uh, for gems, you want to include the Int Gems. So I have both of the Int Gems, actually. Uh, you want to have both as well for all three specs. Um, and then the rest of them are kind of just a mix. I've just used whatever gem sim the highest. So I had to sim my character very rigorously to get to this point. Uh, but I think generally speaking, there are some things that we can say are true. So one thing is that this trinket is fucking busted and you want to use it. Another thing is that having an on use trinket is good. Um, so, you know, you can use the Manifesto of Madness if you'd like. It's a decent trinket. Uh, you can use other trinkets as well. Um, hell, you could go with two passive trinkets. That's probably fine, too. Um, but uh, when it comes to your essences, um, there are two variants. You're going to either want to go uh, World Vein, and this is going to be better for like shorter fights. Um, or you're going to want to go VOP as your major for like longer fights on longer fights. On average, the VOP is going to end up being better on shorter fights. World Vane is going to be better. If you're wondering how to play this, um, basically how you do this is you just spam arcane missiles outside of arcane power. So whenever you have arcane power up, you're going to, uh, play normally. And then outside of that, you're going to spam missiles. We're going to go ahead and hide chat here for a second and show this very quickly. So here's our target. Um, so basically in this situation, you would cast Touch of the Magi into your uh, your World Vein, and then you're just going to spam Arcane Blast here. If you get a proc, you're going to use it. Unless it's at the end, we're getting two Arcane, uh, Arcane, uh, what are they called? Clear Casting. There we go. And then obviously re-up on your rune, and then you're basically just spamming Arcane Missiles outside of your, uh, outside your cooldowns. You're literally just spamming Arcane Missiles. It's that easy. Look, my character just gave up. He isn't even casting anymore. He's just standing there. And I know that this feels stupid and it probably looks stupid, but guess what? It's actually quite good. Uh, so once you get about to here where Touch of the Magi is about to fall off again, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to clear your uh, clear your charges, cast it again, and then go right back into it. And you want to refresh your arcane missiles like around this area or after. So anywhere beyond this second tick here is fine. But you basically just spam missiles and you don't want to idle, obviously. Uh, so I'm about to be out of mana here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to evocate back up. As soon as we evocate back up, I'm going to cast Rune of Power again and we're going to go back into spamming, baby. That's the name of the game. And the cooldowns are about to be up, so you're about to see the damage pop off again. So just doing our thing. As you know, we love to spam arcane missiles. That's our favorite. Spamming arcane missiles is very fun. Now, obviously, if you have a mana gym, you can use that too, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, but right here, it looks like we are ready. Dropping this again, and it's literally a repeat of last time. Arcane Blast, baby. And there you go. That's really all there is to it. Okay, so yeah, there were some some people that said I didn't show how to play it. This is just one way to play, by the way. There are other ways to play Arcane 2. Uh, you can focus more on the Arcane Blast aspect, and it looks like, actually, it's all pretty close. Like, in logs that I've looked at for Arcane, it looks like um, most of the different play styles uh, for Arcane are all very, very close to each other. And in fact, here's a log, right? We'll use one example here. Uh, so this is a log uh, we can use as an example to kind of talk about this point. Uh, both of these mages basically did the same damage. Now, in terms of what their builds are, they're a little bit different, but if we look at the actual casts, it's actually very interesting. 
So one mage did 46 casts of Arcane Missiles, 14 of Arcane Blast. The other mage did 46 of, of Arcane Blast, 15 of Missiles. So as you can see, they're like literally a reflection of each other. Uh, and if we go to the actual damage itself, let's cut the, uh, cut the people off this log. So we stop comparing and let's look at the log. Here we go. Oop. We had it there for a second. Um, it showed both of them basically doing the same damage on this log. Uh, but yeah, so, um, so just keep in mind that with arcane, it is, uh, there are a lot of question marks. We don't really know what's going to be best. Um, but, uh, it seems like there are a lot of different ways to kind of get to the same result here. And as you can see, two mage ta taking a very different approach, ending up both at 100 percentiles, both doing very, very high damage in their builds. They're a little bit different in their stats. They're a little bit different, but if you want, um, I can link this, this, uh, log as well. Uh, but it just goes to show, um, that, uh, that you can, you can find a lot of different ways to get to the same spot. Basically, uh, the link is, is a little bit scuffed, so I'm going to have to maybe clean up the link to link it, but yeah. Uh, you guys get the point yeah we don't have all the puzzle pieces yet uh so we're gonna have to go more of a standard more uh you know normal arcane build i guess you could say um basically you know you go the same build as you would normally go right now uh arcane echo is a new talent that allows us to get kind of like a watered down prophecy of fear buff on enemies whenever you use touch of the magi uh this is a trinket that was around in hfc if you're familiar with it uh basically it's like every time you hit the target it explodes and deals yeah. small damage to targets around it it's a pretty minor talent, but it does okay damage. Uh, the alternative here is Resonance, which basically just makes Arcane Barrage hit 15% uh, harder per target it hits. So this is just going to be like a straight up single target increase. Um, and in multi-target, it's going to be the better option, uh, but less of a passive cleave kind of thing. Uh, when it comes to your 45 row, the choice is between Arcane Orb and Reverberate. They both kind of fill the same niche. This is the AOE row. Uh, so reverberate's probably going to be better in oh, like smaller target amounts over one, and arcane orb is going to be better at single target and at higher target counts. Uh, arcane orb basically you send out an orb, it gives you an arcane charge per target you hit, and uh, this hits a lot of enemies. It's really really strong. Reverberate obviously uh, gives you more. So these these two talents don't really even matter for the build I'm talking about. Arcane arcane orb can be used to basically get back charges, but. Um, it's pretty minor. Same with Echo. I mean, the, the main stuff is uh, you, you want to go, if you're going to Missile Spam build, you want to have Amplification. That's the main thing, right? So instead of Rule of Therese, Rule of Therese is the Arcane Blast build. Amplification is the Arcane Missile build. That's the only thing that really matters. Otherwise, you can just basically copy the talents from this video. Arcane Charges, which means more Arcane Barrages, but in a super high target count scenario, right? Like over six targets, uh, this is going to start dropping off and giving way to Arcane Orb. Yep. Uh, so the choice here is definitely um, a, a bit of a toss up. It, it kind of depends on, I guess, your play style, your preferences. But I personally like Arcane Orb a lot. So that's what I'm going to be picking. And then for the last talent, obviously, we have an overpowered talent. So we pick it uh, when it comes to the. Uh, I should also mention Enlightened is is uh, also good for Arcane Blast um, if you're going to the Arcane Blast build. So it isn't necessarily black and white here. You might need to sim your character to see whatever is best. Uh, keep in mind the sim if you have all the Arcane stuff. Uh, it's going to be casting Arcane Blast during your cooldowns, and it's going to be casting Arcane Missiles outside your cooldowns. Uh, but yeah, it looks like Overpowered and Enlightened, uh, at least from what I can see, are fairly close. Most logs are using Arca uh, Overpowered, uh, but there are definitely logs that are using um, Enlightened as well. So, you know, definitely keep an eye on both of those talents. Obviously, we'll know informa more information as time progresses. Uh, but for now, um, it looks like majority of people are sticking with Overpowered. Some people are trying to Enlightened. It's a bit of a mixed bag, but you know, we'll, we'll find out more. Obviously this is still a very, very young patch. So the heart of Azeroth, uh, normally you would be going, uh, condensed life force, but arcane power is now a two minute cooldown. Uh, so I instead recommend having world vein. I think world vein either world vein or visions of perfection minor, like we meant or major, like we mentioned, right? So on shorter fights, I would choose world vein because it's more consistent on longer fights. I would choose VOP because uh, it, it's probably going to be higher damage overall. And uh, to answer your question, uh, if you're running VOP in the build, I am using World Vein right now because I, I tend to favor consistent damage. Uh, but I mean, obviously, you know, you can pick your own poison, right? Um, and it, it really just depends on whatever it is uh, that, that you get in terms of RNG, right? Like you're going to see logs being a mix of both, right? We got VOPs, we got World Veins. Uh, it really just depends on what kind of RNG you have. But over time, most likely all of these logs will have Vision of Perfection as the main one, 
right? As people, as more and more reports are produced, more and more of those like 1% crazy RNG logs will be in, in this website. And those logs will eventually take over. And then every log on this website will be VOP, right? That's just kind of like the nature of how Warcraft logs works. The stuff with like the highest damage average with like the highest uh, ability to pop off is always going to be what ends up being on this website. So keep in mind, if you want consistent damage, go World Vein. If you want RNG, do VOP. But overall, like on average, VOP is probably better if the fight's long. Vein meshes better with the arcane power cooldown here. And keep in mind with arcane, basically everything has changed when it comes to idle GCDs. All right. So whenever you are casting your arcane power, you're automatically going to drop a rune of power. True. Which is great. Uh, whenever you cast touch of the magi, which is a new ability that you now have baseline. This used to be a proc. Now you can actually just use it. Uh, this generates four arcane charges. So this True. is literally charged up, but just in the form of an ability that also applies a uh, like an accumulating damage debuff on the target, which is really awesome. And uh, you don't have to use, you know, a whole cast for Rune of Power anymore. You don't have to worry about an idle GC with Arcane Power. Uh, basically, all of, like, the idle time with setting up for your cooldowns has been reduced. Yep. Uh, so whenever it comes to dealing damage, you're going to want to just go straight into it. You would use your uh, your World Vein into Touch of the Magi. Or touch, of the, power and or, or touch of the Magi in the World Vein. The, uh, SimCraft uses World Vein Touch of the Magi. I personally prefer Touch of the Magi, um, World Vein. It's it's inconclusive which one is better, as far as I can tell. Um, so it's really just up to you. Just immediately start machine gunning the target with as many arcane brushes as possible. At the very end of arcane power, you're going to want to use Presence of Mind and get the double tap off with your arcane blast there. Uh, burn your mana all the way till uh, the, the point where you're out of mana, basically, and then evocate back up. You'll notice... Evocate does not give you all your mana back anymore. True. It actually doesn't give you all of it. It's like 75%, right? So you actually don't have to go all the way down. To it's it, it depends. It depends. Uh, Evocate gives me back most of my mana, but it doesn't necessarily always give you back all your mana is what I meant to say here. Uh, but what the point I'm still trying to make is, is correct. To zero mana, you can go down to like 30%, 25%, somewhere in that area, and that's totally fine. Uh, and then after that, you're going to want to enter the conserve phase. Now, keep in mind, there are some issues with mana in the pre-patch. You might notice your mana being a little bit low. Uh, do whatever it takes to keep your mana at a relatively stable uh, rate until it's time to burn it again. Evocate and Arcane Power do not share cooldowns. We're going to skip ahead here. Very small in the grand scheme of things. Uh, so for stats on Arcane, it's pretty straightforward. You're basically going to want as high of int as possible. So just... This is, this is especially true, right? And this is the reason why... Uh, for Frost, it's like Frigid Grasp is a very, very good trade. It ends up, uh, this is why you want to have the highest item level as right possible uh, with the traits that it requires, right? Um, this is why you want to have both of your, uh, you want to have both of your int gems, right? I've got one gem here, one gem here, both int gems, right? You want to have them both, right? Int is really, really strong right now. So you're going to want to capitalize on that. In fact, um, I don't have it here in the log, but int is almost always, in fact, no, Int is always the most simming, uh, high simi uh, highest simming stat. There we go. Um, so yeah, get int. Prioritize item level above everything else. Uh, and then whenever it comes to your other stats, you're going to want versatility. Um, everything else aside from versatility is pretty close. So it doesn't really matter what you end up getting. Uh, just focus on item level. That's the main thing. Uh, and uh, everything else should be uh, just fine. Uh, when it comes to the Azerite traits themselves, uh, you're definitely going to want to have... Okay, I'm going to skip over this because this is no longer true for the build that we're uh, talking about, right? So I recommend going Arcane Pummeling and saying fuck Equipoise. You can go Equipoise still, uh, but I think generally speaking, this this whole section is probably wrong now. Um, and you probably just want to go Arcane Pummeling for everything. We're going to skip over this. Your mana bar should get unless you're burning. Um, we'll end up making... There's a lot of cleaving. We'll end up making it insane, but... As far as I can tell from my own tests, uh, it looks like Frost and Fire are going to be uh, pretty strong. I, I expect Frost will probably be uh, the strongest of True. all three specs. True. And probably Fire tailing behind it. Uh, but then again, you know, there's a lot of cleave and Iolitha. So maybe Fire will end up really, really showing us uh, what it's made out of because of all that cleave. Um, True. Yeah. So Fire. So uh, in, in like what we've seen so far, uh, it looks like Frost, Fire, and Arcane are actually extremely close. Like all of them are extremely close. And it really just depends on what you want to play. But keep in mind, this is a cleave raid. So if fire is ever close in a cleave raid, what that means is that fire is probably not that close. 
right? In single target. And, uh, and I think that this is, uh, this is apparent too. If we go to Warcraft logs and we just look at uh, what people are running on these fights, obviously we have a very, very small sample size right now, uh, but we can still make some assumptions. And that is that on single target, it seems like most of the specs are pretty close, right? Um, obviously we're looking at a very, very small sample size though. As time progresses, we're gonna see this kind of flesh out, but I think uh, the overall sentiment here, which is that Frost seems to be strongest and then Fire and then Arcane, I think that this is still generally true, uh, true. unless you're on a fight that's like pure single target. In pure single target fights, Arcane is going to be better. If you want to know what I'm going to be playing tonight, because I will be raiding in about an hour, okay? What I'm going to be playing tonight is Arcane on single target fights, and I'm going to be playing Frost on AoE fights, and I'm not even going to play Fire. Why? Because I've played Fire so much in the past six to eight months that, you know, I'd rather play something new. Um, and I think that Arcane is strong enough on single target to warrant me only playing Arcane on single target. And I think that Frost is strong enough to basically hold up on any other fight. So that's what I am doing. Um, so it really just kind of remains to be seen. Obviously, you know, I'm kind of just making predictions here. I don't know how it's actually going to play out. Uh, so you're really going to have to just see how this goes and adapt. That's why I've included all three specs in this. I didn't want to just focus on the one that I thought was going to be best because and, and but I'm so glad I did this, by the way. I'm so glad that I showed all three specs. That was like, wow, it would have been a disaster if I didn't because all of them are so close, right? All of them are so close. That means that like every spec could just be the best spec for like a specific fight because they're so fucking close. So I'm so glad I include all of them. I might be wrong and then you guys need to be prepared for that outcome, right? Um, so definitely be refreshing Warcraft logs on the day of the patch. Yep. I will not be raiding. I will be raiding that Wednesday following. We never raid Today. on Tuesdays if there's ever a big patch. Uh, but I will continue to produce content. So definitely follow me uh, on or subscribe to me on, on YouTube here if you want to continue to see my videos. Uh, you know, definitely go over to Twitch and follow me there if you want to see me play and ask questions. Yo, guys, the YouTube guy just said subscribe. Um, it's going to be a big learning process, right? Free patch is going to be big. We, we don't know what's going to happen. It's uh, there's still a lot of question marks, right? Uh, but hopefully this video has prepared you as much as uh, as much as it has prepared me just making it right because I had to research this stuff. Yeah. Um, OK, so overall, yeah, let's talk about it. So I think that overall the video is uh, mostly correct, overwhelmingly correct. Uh, the only stuff that I would say is uh, just flat out wrong is the arcane stuff. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, now that we've talked through the arcane stuff, now that you have uh, you should have a better understanding of like where that is wrong, because it is still true that there is an Arcane Blast build that you can go, but it just looks like Arcane Pummeling is, for some reason, it's overtuned, right? So if you want to try that out, uh, definitely try out the Arcane Pummeling build. All it requires you to do is just go Amplication, Amplification here, and then as far as your Azerite and all that other stuff goes, right, you're going to want to have uh, either World Vein or Visions Major, and then for the other stuff, I recommend Crucible and Conflict and Strife, but you can choose other ones. These are just the ones I chose. Um, and then, uh, whenever it comes to the Azerite, make sure you have Arcane Pummeling in every stat, in every slot. You need to have Arcane Pummeling on every piece of gear. And then for whatever else, I recommend Heart of Darkness, but obviously more item level is better, right? So like, uh, on this piece, it's a higher item level thing, so the traits are better. So, yeah, um, Arcane Pummeling is just really, really strong. Um, so that, that about does it. Uh, I'm going to cut this and slap it on the YouTubes. Uh, definitely go follow my YouTube channel, uh, or subscribe to it, whatever it's called on YouTube. And um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, so getting back to what we were talking about now, 